Good morning, fellowship. All right. Well, I hope all the applause is for Jesus. <laughs> He's our Savior, and that's who we come to worship. Amen. It is good to be here. Uh, whenever I have an opportunity to share at the fellowship, I'm mindful that there are so many ministers here. And uh, for Pastor Lavelle and Sister Marva to allow me an opportunity to come and share what the Lord has placed on my heart, I just do not take it for granted and I do not take it lightly. So I'm thankful to be here and it is wonderful to see all of you all from this angle. <laughs> you all really look good. The scriptures tell us that today, you know, this is the day that the Lord has made and we'll rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. He's not just talking about on Sunday morning. This is the day, this is the time that the Lord has given us. And I want to share something that the pastor uh, wrote, and uh, I've talked to our uh, groups about it. Uh, but before I get there, let me acknowledge uh, Pastor Jackson. You did a wonderful job this morning. And I love how you read all those wonderful things about your wife and her birthday. And I was saying, oh, my wife's birthday too. But I said, I don't have all those words. But Claire really blessed me when she said, it's nothing on this card. <laughs> So, so I want to say happy birthday to my wife, Andrea. And uh, we, are, we, we are heading on 47 years of marriage. Can you believe it? And, uh, and, and, and if you're trying to guess, I was a teenager when I, when I met her. <laughs> but... Uh, God has been good to us, and you know, he blessed me with a wife when I didn't really know how to appreciate a wife. And, uh, but now, I really know that uh, what the scriptures say, that a man who finds a wife finds a good thing. Amen? So I'm blessed. Uh, we have children and uh, grandchildren, and that time just flies by it i mean it just goes by well, you know when you're looking at it from from this end back it looks like it's just a flash of course looking forward it can look like it's going to take forever so god has been good to us i hail from wisconsin uh i spent i spent 23 years in the united states navy i know there's some navy veterans here it was a blessing i went all over the world and then i had another uh career where i spent 20 years in the school district all of that was here in Texas. I'm not from Texas. I actually never stepped foot in Texas until I retired from the United States Navy. I was in Rota, Spain, and I came here. Someone told me that the name Corpus Christi meant the body of Christ. I said, it's got to be a good place. So I'm blessed to be here. I know that time goes by very quickly, so I want to use my time wisely, and I don't want to take up your time. Uh, let me give a little bit of a plug for Fellowship Connections. Sister Vanessa, or Pastor Vanessa, is over here on the front row. She heads up a large behind-the-scenes ministry that many of you all may not know about. I know every now and then they'll put it up, or they'll put it in the, uh, in the, uh, in the bulletin. And I encourage you to get involved in a Fellowship Connection group. Uh, I'm in three. And I'm looking for number four. <laughs> but uh, No, because it builds us up. Let me tell you, when I joined the Navy back in 1974, they sent me to basic training. And we didn't just train on one day. <laughs> oh, no. We trained every day. But also what they did is they taught us how to continue the training that we got, how to continue to walk in that way. And I think that's what's important as well about the uh, fellowship connections. We're hearing the word preach, but if you're just coming to get word preached on Sunday, you're going to be a little bit deficit. You've got to exercise what God has given you and all of the gifts that are here in the house. I can't acknowledge everybody, but you all who are serving, who are behind the scenes, you all are doing a great work, and it's a God-called work. Amen? Amen? Listen, the title of my message today is God Sent His Son. Oh, I need to say it again. God sent His Son. And his name is Jesus. God sent his son. Amen. Listen, and why we were, uh, he said that God demonstrated his love towards us. That why we were yet sinners, he died for us. Woo! 
God sent his son. Man. Well, listen, the world's in a terrible way. Ah, you might not know it. <laughs> the world's in a bad way. And I've lived a little bit now where I can say times have gotten bad. You know, there was a time when I was a kid, we can go outside and play until the lights, you know, till the, you know, the street lights come on. Come on. You better not do that now. It's a shame that even here in the house of God, and the pastor has said this to us, don't send your children to the restroom. Take them. It's the kind of day we're living in. While I worked for the school, I was a social worker. So as uh, Pastor Tim mentioned, I work with a lot of families. A lot of times you think they're just families in trouble. But nowadays, people can be making, I mean, mom and dad can be working and still struggling, making good salaries. I've seen people's possessions getting put on the street. Uh, listen, the fellowship does a, uh, a uh, benevolence. We do a food bank here a couple of times a, a, a month and people are getting in line and here's my observation people are not getting in long lines to get food just because they're greedy they need it rents are i, I mean out of out of this world you know and so we live in a good place but we got some problems it's the world <laughs> it's the world system and how many of y'all know it's not going to get any better God has told us, read Matthew 24. It's not going to get any better. But I want to read something that the pastor said. I bought this devotional up here with me. This is a brand new one. Brother Ephraim told me about it because Pastor Mario's class in our discipleship class, we have been going through the devotionals, and I didn't know we had a new one. But every week, the pastor has a new devotional. I encourage you to get it. I don't know if they have any more, but you cannot have mine. All right? <laughs> Uh, I went to Sister Vanessa and, uh, and, and uh, Sister uh, Yadira, and I got as many copies as I could for the men who were in our group because we're, co we're continuing to go through them. But this is what the pastor said uh, in one of the devotions. It started out by saying this here, that the night is passing and that the day is dawning. Listen to that. The night is passing and the day is dawning. We're living in a dark time. But God sent his son. Amen. And his son is in us. Amen. So the day is dawning. Amen. Listen else what he says about this here. He says, this is a glorious day. Oh, it makes you think about that. A glorious day. Pastor, what, what are we talking about? Glorious. We got economic problems. I'm not just talking about the United States. Political problems. What safe place to go to? The grocery store? School, church, where's the safe place? Your home? We got some troubles, but God sent his son. Amen. His name is Jesus. He died for us while we were yet sinners. My, my. Now listen, I also want to say briefly, time ticks up here very fastly, but I want to tell you, in 2018, we had a... That's been five years. You know, we do our congregational meetings. And the pastor put this note out. I don't know if y'all can see it, but it's two-sided. I can't read it all to you, but I want to tell you, it's all in caps. You know, when someone writes something and it's all in caps, <laughs> what, what does that normally express to you? There's an urgency here. I'm telling you, this is some serious stuff. And he was telling us five years ago. He said, I want you to be aware of the political climates. They're rife with hatred, suspicion. Listen, that's so true. Five years. Five years. If I went on, you'd say, no, Brother Gray, he wrote that yesterday. No, he wrote it five years ago. He gives, listen, we got some treasures here with the pastor shared with us that, that the Lord has been giving to him. Wow. Listen, the vision for CCCF and ha has always been, I mean, 37 years, Sister Marvin, how long? 37 years? Here it is. It says to train up and equip the army of the Lord. Where are they at? This is the army. We are the church to train us up. How are they training us? Listen, don't just come on Sunday morning to get your training like basic training. You got to go every day. So there's connection groups. I'm not just promoting them for me. 
I'm promoting them for you because I'm a part of you. <laughs> All right? We need this here. Uh, and it's to perfect or bring the maturity of the people of God. That we might reach each person in our city for God. But that's what we're doing, all right? And so we're to be a light. We're to take the gospel to the world. Pastors in Indonesia. Uh, uh, most of us have never been there. Most of us can't even spell it. <laughs> if I were to tell you to find it on a map, you'd say, I don't know. But then technology put him right in the room with us here this morning. You all who were here for the early service. He was, he was there talking to us. You know, it's a work that I know has got to be difficult for him. Those years that I served in the military, being away from my family, traveling to parts all over the world, those, they're difficult. I'm glad I didn't give up. I had to take care of a family. But listen, the pastor has a higher call. And when you're going into parts of the world now, <laughs> I tell you, it better be a call. So again, this is what he says about this, a glorious day, the day belongs to the church, it's our time. In all this darkness, it's our time. And I'm not talking about people who are worldly. He's talking about the church, a prepared and ready people. How are you going to be prepared? How are you going to be ready? You have to exercise. You have to be in prayer. You have, when I say exercise, I'm talking about in the things of God. All right? Paul admonishes us that, and uh, our pastor has been teaching us that. So I've shared those couple of things. I just wanted to touch them on a little bit and tell you that it's so much here that I can't give you all of it, but I want you to know that these things didn't just come upon us suddenly. They're here, and we're in the midst of them. And when you're in a fight, it's not the time to try to figure out how to fight. You know, this is how we fight our battles, on our knees. All right? So I praise God for that. Now, uh, God is calling us. He is calling us, the church, the called out, those who are born again. He's calling us out. What are we to do, Brother Gray? We're to be in prayer. Can we do that? <laughs> All right. We're to provide for those who can't provide for themselves. I see the fellowship putting, uh, you know, putting food out there. People are coming and helping uh, Brother Doug and the ministry with him. They are doing a work that, believe me, people need food. Yeah. And some people would rather throw it away than to give it to people who are in need. When you go by, and, and like I said, the, the work I was in, when you see somebody's family and all their belongings getting put on the street, and you can't do anything about it. You said something's wrong with the world, but God sent his son. Amen. And how is the world going to see his son? Through us. We have been made alive. And that's what I really, I really, really want to talk about. So we're to pray, we're to fast, we're to witness, going into the jails, going to the hospital. You know, one of the, the best memories I have of anybody uh, who could say they're my friend or family is when I was in the hospital years ago. Uh, uh, Brother Junius, you'll appreciate this. I got sick back in the early 80s, and I was in Portsmouth, Virginia, and um, I had to get a surgery. Only surgery I've ever had in my life. It hurt, and I don't want to do, ever do it again. They said we get a lot of pain medicine. I don't ever want to do it again. But here's the deal. Back then, in like 83, they didn't have private rooms. They had a big open bay, and they had a bunch of us old-timers. I wasn't an old-timer. I was a 20-year-old. And we're laying in that thing. It's probably 20 beds in a big open bay. And every night, somebody was dying. <laughs> And, and you could hear it and see it. They're over there trying to revive them. You know, but think about this here. We are called into a place to take those who are dying back to life. That's what God did for us. Now watch this here. Uh, I want to read uh, here in Ephesians. I gave notes to, uh, to, to, for this in Ephesians 2, and I think I picked up in verse 4, but I want to really read from verse 1 through maybe verse 10. This is a familiar part of Scripture, but I want to go through it a little bit slow. So in Ephesians, the first, uh, second chapter, the first verse, but let me say this something about Ephesus before I go too much further. Ephesus is just like the world, corrupt, <laughs> crazy stuff going on. 
So Paul goes in there and he's talking to the church because the church is called out of the world. Now listen, a lot of the world will creep in here, <laughs> all right? But the church ought to not be out there creeping into the world. Our interaction with the world is to try to get them here, not worldly. Right, amen. Thank you, uh, Pastor Jackson. So this is what it says in, uh, in Ephesians 1. It says, and he made you alive. Wow. Those who were dead. How were we dead? We were dead in our trespasses and in our sin. In which you once walked according to the course of this world. You know, the world is crazy. Killing, stealing, lying. It's all, it's, it's like everything goes, right? And so, in which you, uh, in which you once uh, walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of, this, of the air. Now listen, we don't wrestle with flesh and blood, but we wrestle against principalities and powers and spiritual wickedness in high places. There's a devil loose. <laughs> All right? So people are acting crazy and you say, what's going on? The devil comes but to steal, to kill, and to destroy. And he's about his work because he knows that his time is short. But God sent his son. And his name is Jesus. Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea Philippi with all his disciples. You'll find this in Matthew. I think I put it in my notes. And they were talking, and Jesus asked him, he said, Who do men say that I am? Amen. Who do they say I am? This is Jesus. And they said, Well, you're like uh, Elijah or John the Baptist or one of the or Jeremiah or one of the prophets. Yeah, and then Jesus said, well, Who do you say that I am? Church? Who do you say? It was like this. They were kind of quiet. <laughs> Peter spoke up. You know, Peter would talk and walk and run and cuss. But Peter said, you are the Christ. You are the son of the living God. And then Jesus told him, he said, flesh and blood have not revealed this to you, but my father, which is in heaven. And he said, and upon this rock, I'll build my church. And he said, and the gates of hell will not prevail. That's all kind of hell breaking loose out here in the world. But he cannot mess with the church. Listen, Jesus is not coming back for the world. He died for the world, but he's coming back for the church. Are you in? Now listen, you can't just join and say, I'm in. <laughs> it don't work like that. I got baptized. It don't work like that. You got to be born into this body. See, we get babies all the time. There was a baby this morning that came to the Lord. Pastor Kim was preaching. He walked that aisle down there and he said, Lord, save me. Amen. He was born into this body. Amen. That's what God has given us to church. We got some power. Amen. Amen. It says like dynamite, dunamis. Amen. When we speak and we speak that name, there's power in it. Wow. I'm looking at the clock so you don't have to now. <laughs> <laughs> Let me continue on. It says, so among, among whom also you were once conducted your life. We were just like everybody else. Filled with lust. Uh, fulfilling the desires that we had uh, and of our mind. And we were by nature the children of wrath. We are just like everybody else. Just like that. But God has not called us to wrath. He knew we were in trouble. Now listen. I met a young lady this morning. I know she came from over in Kingsville, and I said, young lady, what's your name? I don't want to call her out, but her name is Grace. How many of y'all know something about Grace? Amen. Grace. Grace. See, we weren't so good in doing all the right things that God said, I'm going to go down there. I'm going to take care of them. They, they, they've been so good. They've been doing everything right. They've just been trying their best. God said, they need some help. So God sent his son. In his name is Jesus. Amen. His name is Jesus. Now listen, the world wants to reject him. Fight against him. Rebel against him. But God's not called us for that. We got a different spirit. And I could tell you a whole lot about Genesis and Exodus and Leviticus and Numbers. And the reason I can tell you about them because I'm reading them every day. Line by line, step by step, we're leading a group about that. But let me tell you what, the children of Israel, they fought back against God on everything. God gave them everything. Church gave you everything that you need. Gave you a, 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 a wonderful leader. 
You know, a shepherd. How many of y'all know a shepherd be walking around and the sheep would come up and bump him? I say, what are you doing? Sheep, I'm helping you. Give him some food and the sheep bite your hand. I say, what's wrong with you, sheep? I'm trying to help you. And the Lord said, I come to help you. But he's not going to strive with us always in this foolishness. Not with the world. He's coming for the church. Amen. Now, let me tell you, I wanted to say real quickly about the dispensations. You know, when man was created, there was a, there was a dispensation or time of innocence. And then after that, you know, it became a, a time of consciousness when the man fell. Adam, you know, he, he, he wanted to know everything. Anybody here want to know everything? Because God said, you can eat of every tree, but that one over there that talks about everything, leave it alone. We don't need to know everything. All right? And after that, uh, Noah came on the scene. You know, because God washed everything away. He left Noah and his family. And then he said, I tell you what, Noah, I'm going to give you government, human government. We're still dealing with that in a sense, right? But God helped him out. And then through that, God gave a promise. After Noah, he gave promise to a man named Abraham. Now, Abraham didn't even know how to appreciate the grace that he was living under, but Abraham and us are blessed by that. Now, here comes out of Abraham one called Moses. He's on down the line, but his name is Moses. And so God gave Moses the law. Oh, we could talk about the law. How many of y'all know what the Ten Commandments are? How many of y'all can keep them? Okay, now I'm glad nobody put their hand up. <laughs> God showed us. He showed us. You can't keep this. Now, I got scriptures here to tell you that law was put here as a tutor for us to teach us something. Now, here we are after this time that God gave us grace through his son, Amen. Jesus Christ. Amen. See, he sent his son. That's what we needed. So you say, well, why is God giving us that? That's what we needed. I got to read the rest of Ephesians 2. This is so good. Uh, so let me tell you what it says in verse 8. I'm going to pick up in verse 8. It says, but God demonstrated his own love towards us. Brother Rodney uses that word quite a bit, demonstrate. You know, you can say you love somebody all day long, but how are you going to demonstrate it? Amen. How are you going to do it? Talk is cheap. All right. But he said he demonstrated toward us while we were yet sinners. He died for us. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Let me let me let me go down to verse eight. Uh, for any of y'all who are ever in my class, you know, I got some crazy notes. I don't use the uh, the, the electronics too much. But anyways, let me go down. I'm in Ephesians uh, 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 two, verse four. It says, but God. There you go. But God. All that we were in dead in sin. He said, but God, who is rich in mercy. How many of y'all know we needed some mercy? All right. Uh, because of his great love, he so loved this world that he gave us his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. God loves us. Right. And then it goes on and it says that he uh, he made us alive together with Christ to be seated in those heavenly places. That's where we are now. If you're in Christ, if you're not in Christ, you're not there. Everybody's going to heaven, but nobody wants to get saved. I can say it like this. Everybody wants to go to heaven, but nobody wants to die. You got to die to yourself. And he says he raised us up together to sit with him in heavenly places. That in the ages to come, I stopped at the dispensation of grace, but we're going on into kingdom after grace. There's a, there's a, there's a time on grace as well. God's not going to strive with man always. Okay? And then it goes on and tells us that uh, from in the ages to come, uh, for, oh yeah, that he might show his exceeding riches and his grace and his kindness. Really, we could say that's what God gave us, his grace. How many of y'all know that we can give grace to others? How do you do that? Just be kind to somebody. Care about other people. Love people. God said in his word, he said that, you know, I give you a new commandment. That you love one another. And that's how people are going to know who we are. That's right. That's right. That we have love one for another. Okay, I'm almost there. So, uh, verse 9 says, it's not a works. I couldn't do this on my own. I was dead. <laughs> dead people don't do anything. <laughs> they just be dead. That's it. All right. So, and he said, anyway, otherwise people be saying, hey, I was dead and I got up. <laughs> yeah, well... You sure you were dead? All right. So now listen, for we are his workmanship, 
created in Christ Jesus for a work that God has prepared beforehand. What's the work that God has given to the church? That we go into all the world, right? Then we introduce them to a savior. God sent his son and his name is Jesus. That's who we need. Yeah, that clock is talking to me. All right, so listen, let's be kind to one another. Let's realize that we're in a time that uh, is drawing near. I want to share something real quick because my time is almost on. But, but, but listen, it's so important that we know who we are in Christ. The authority that we have. And we cannot hang on to this world. If you really care about people and you really care about your loved ones, you know what you ought to be doing? Praying for them. And when they tell you, hey, I'm just going to do my thing, go pray for them again. But tell them, tell them again. I got this letter from a student. I met her in 2004. That's, that's, what, that's almost 20 years ago. I didn't remember her. But a couple of years ago, I was getting ready to retire. And um, she, wrote, she wrote me this letter. I printed it out. Some of you all have sent it to you because you, you know that what you do for the Lord, you don't always see and you don't always know. But I'm going to tell you up front. This young lady, she wrote, and she got me right before I left the school district. She wrote me a letter. And she says, uh, thank you, Mr. Gray. She said, I hope this letter reaches you, Mr. Bryant Gray. I'm not sure if it will, and I'm not sure if you'll remember me, but I wanted to reach out to you. This is a teenager at the time. She said, I attended the school where you work, 2004, and I just want you to know, that's what she said, I never did forget everything that you did for me. And I was thinking, well, what did I do for you? I don't know. I'm, I'm sure it had to do something with helping her. And she says in here, she said, for everything you did for me, you always helped me with food, clothes, and school. But most of all, you listened to me. You, I didn't make this up. You were a safe place for me. <laughs> when I was going through terrible times in my childhood, I know I, uh, I, I did, she said, I find myself in a lot of trouble. I got kicked out of school. I spent a lot of years in juvenile. And she said, but that's not the end of the story. She says, listen, she said, I got my GED. I got my license in cosmetology. She said, I got married. She said, my husband is very successful. She said, we have three beautiful children. We live in Florida. We have a nice home. She says, if you'd have told me this, Back when I was in school, I probably would have laughed at you. She said, I, I get to stay at home with my children. Most importantly, over all, she said, I'm serving the Lord. <laughs> Woo! She said, I work in children's ministry at our church. And she says, God is good. Amen. She said, I didn't write to brag on myself. I'm walking, so it's a little hard for me to see it. She said, I didn't write to brag on myself. Um, but just for you uh, to see everything that you've done for kids, big or small, has made an impact. You certainly impacted my life. For sure, I will never forget it. I wanted to reach out to you many times, but I didn't know what to say. You did pretty good. <laughs> but... Uh, <laughs> I'm not sure if this is going to reach you, but I just want to just, uh, give a simple thank you. Her name is Grace. She sent me several pictures of her and her family. Beautiful family. I was in tears. I said, oh, my goodness. So, listen, not because I was so smart, not because I was so good, because we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus to do a work that he's already prepared for us. All we got to do is do it. Show up and remember God sent his son and his name is Jesus. Amen. I, 
I thank God for this opportunity to share just this short bit that I shared with you. And and, any of you all who teach or share the word, you know, you put in a week or two weeks worth of work for these 15 minutes. But God is who needs to be heard. Today, I want to say to us that all of us who are part of the church, we had to be born in. And God is saying to me right now, everybody here, everybody, listen, we were born into sin. And we are falling short of his glory, of his requirement. And that sin, the wages of it is death. Here's the good news. God sent his son. His name is Jesus. The scriptures tell us that today is the day of salvation. Harden not your heart. Receive him. Don't leave here like you can't. We can sit around and be a spectator, but as the pastor says, you got to be a participator in the church. It's a nice place to be around a lot of nice people, but you got to be born into this family. And how you do that is you come to the Lord and you confess with your mouth. You say, Lord, I'm a sinner. I need your forgiveness. Believe in your heart that he died. He is the son of God, and he and God raised him from the dead. He said, if you'll believe that and you'll confess it, you'll be saved. We're going to bow. We're going to pray. And then uh, uh, and this is what I want to say to, to you all as I pray. If you've never asked the Lord, if you've never asked the Lord to save you, even if you just have been a participator, I would ask that you come to the altar. You know, I know we can raise our hands too many times an altar call was made and I wouldn't put my hand up. But most of us can walk because we know how to walk out that back door. Walk to the front today. This is your call. God is calling you. He said, listen, you don't want to be dead any longer. You want to be made alive. You come. So I'm going to ask the elders to come over here. I'm going to pray and then we're going to put it in the hands of our praise team. If y'all give me one moment, let's bow and let's pray. Father, we're thankful for your love, your mercy, your grace, Lord. And I first and foremost want to lift up anyone here who has never asked you to be their Lord and Savior. This is their opportunity. They can come. There's elders here. They can come right now. And they can just confess that I'm a sinner and I need a Savior. And Lord, I pray right now that you will give them great boldness to overcome any fear or anything that might hold them in their chair. Who cares what other people think? Come to the Lord. This might be your last opportunity. Father, I thank you for your word. I thank you, Lord, for this opportunity to extend again an invitation to come and to be born into the church, Lord. I thank you for this day. I thank you for the ministry that uh, Pastor Lavelle and Sister Marvin have so diligently worked and worked, and they are training people. This work will continue, Lord, until you come. Now, we thank you. But most of all, we thank God that he sent his son, and his name is Jesus. Everybody said together, amen, amen. Come if you want, come. There's elders here. There's elders here.